WCBI News at 5 starts now. A murder charge now looms over a man in connection to the death of a four-year-old boy. Thanks for joining us tonight at 5. The Pickens County Sheriff's Department releasing these developing details almost eight months after the young boy's death. 29-year-old Marquevious Forte is charged with felony murder and aggravated child abuse. Taylor Cunningham was pronounced dead at Pickens County Medical Center last September. District Attorney Andrew Hamlin says Taylor had significant injuries, some in various states of healing. Taylor and his mother were living with Forte at the time of the child's death. Forte is being held in the Pickens County Jail on a $1 million bond. Well, it takes time for evidence to line up in some cases. In this case, regarding four-month-old Taylor Cunningham, other things had to come together before criminal charges could be filed. Now, this case, the district attorney, Andrew Hamlin, says required a lot of time and waiting for autopsy results. He understands that it can be frustrating when someone isn't held accountable immediately, but it's important not to get ahead of the evidence. But it was different um, from the standpoint of it just took some time to get the forensic um, analysis back as well as um, the autopsy back from the Department of Forensic Sciences. That, those are things that um, in, in an investigation like this we have to have back in order to piece together um, the, w what happened. The next step in the case, the district attorney says, is to bring Forte to court. New details tonight after a fatal shooting at a Tupelo apartment complex. This happened yesterday. Tupelo police say Sandarius Isby is charged with murder. Officers, they were called to North Mississippi Medical Center for a reported shooting victim around 3.30 yesterday afternoon. Investigators say the shooting happened at the Oak Apartments on Green Tea Road. Lee County Coroner Carolyn Green confirmed that 27-year-old Tarias Lockridge of Tupelo is the victim. Isby's bond has not yet been set. If you have any information on this case, it's still under investigation. You should call Tupelo Police or Crime Stoppers of Northeast Mississippi. A West Point man serving a life sentence for kidnapping is getting a new sentence. Atrevius Gaston robbed the Sprint Mart on Military Road in February 2015. During that robbery, Gaston held two store workers against their will and sexually assaulted them. He was convicted of kidnapping and other crimes and was ordered to serve life on the kidnapping counts. The Mississippi Court of Appeals Monday rejected that life sentence because according to state law, a jury must make that sentence part of its verdict. And that didn't happen with Gaston. A sentencing hearing must now be scheduled for Gaston, who could receive a maximum 30 years on each kidnapping conviction. Time now to toss things over to meteorologist Jacob Dickey to get a first look at our Tuesday evening forecast. Hey there, Jacob. Hey, Scott. We've got a mix of sun and clouds out there this evening. Really not a bad day. Very summer-like and warm. As we look at those temperatures across the area, still low 80s out there. 82 in Columbus. Amory at 81. It's 82 in Calhoun City. For Winona at 83. As we go in tonight, temperatures will fall into the low to perhaps mid-60s out there. We'll have a few clouds, keep things mild with light south winds. As we look ahead then, the chance for some showers is expected on Wednesday. Those chances tick up into the weekend. Maybe we see some showers and thunderstorms as the summer-like pattern holds on. Coming up in just a bit, we'll time out the chance for rain for you and we'll take a look at how much we expect. Scott. Happening tonight, folks in Monroe County, they're getting the chance to visit with those on the ballot for the 2019 election year. Our Cash Matlock joins us live where things are about to get underway in just less than an hour. Cash, over two dozen candidates are running for different offices. Brad, I'm here at the Monroe County Airport just outside of the Arrow Hangar where, as you can see behind me, the Monroe County Chamber of Commerce is gearing up for that campaign forum that's set to take place from 6 to 8 p.m. tonight. Now, I was, I've been told that all 57 candidates have been invited out to this forum in a very casual networking style setting just to kind of mingle with voters and spread some information. It's a great opportunity for voters to come out and gain information on these political candidates. I'm being told they can also register to vote if they haven't already done so. Of course, this is all in an effort to gear up for that August 6th primary election that's coming up in Monroe County. Um, I'm going to have more on this in our later shows. And for now, I'm Cash Matlock reporting live outside of the Monroe County Airport. I'll send it back to you guys in the studio. All right, thank you very much, Cash. In national news, it's been a political line in the dirt for months. Now the new acting head of Homeland Security says his agency needs more money to deal with what he calls a border crisis. His testimony in front of lawmakers comes as the Trump administration calls for new regulations for asylum seekers. Natalie Brand is on Capitol Hill with the very latest. 
Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Acting uh, Chairwoman DHS Rebel, Secretary Kevin McAleenan told question. the House panel his agency is at a crisis point at the border. We need sustained investment and additional emergency support at the southwest border to overcome the humanitarian and security crisis that we face. Late Monday, the president issued a memo on asylum seekers directing his agencies to propose new regulations that adjudicate asylum applications within 180 days, bar work permits for illegal border crossers, and charge fees for asylum applications and work permits. The White House has accused some asylum seekers of gaming the system. Not every claim is credible. Some claims are credible, and we don't want those who have a credible claim of, of fear and asylum to be hamstrung in the process by those who don't. Randy Caps of the Migration Policy Institute says some of the proposals could face legal challenges. According to international law, there shouldn't be a fee for applying for asylum, and, and the vast majority of countries don't have a fee. Um, so I think that one in particular is likely to be challenged. The White House has not yet put a dollar amount on the proposed fee, but it appears the administration's goal is to deter. McAleenan also faced questions on other Trump administration actions, including separating families at the border. Can you explain the circumstances under which CBP will separate child from a parent? The conditions where a child might be separated from a lawful parent or guardian at this time are extraordinarily rare. McAleenan and told lawmakers his agency could see 70,000 asylum applications this fiscal year in a system that's already severely backlogged. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill. The Trump administration is expected to send a send Congress rather a request this week for more homeland security funding. Still ahead here at Five Dog Lovers, you're going to love this. It's a homecoming reunion you don't want to miss. That story just ahead. I've got a break. Long story short, the little buddy that it's been with Welcome back, everyone. Dog lovers, you're going to love this. An Alabama dog owner reunites with her dog right here in the Golden Triangle two years after she went missing. Jory Talley, she joins us live in the studio with this very heartwarming reunion. Hey, Jory. Hey, Scott. An unforgettable day for a dog mom and her fur baby. The dog, Lady Chanel, was found in West Point. That's nearly 200 miles away from her, her home in Birmingham, Alabama. West Point Clay County Animal, Sh Animal Shelter employees made this day possible. <laughs> Tuesday is the first time since 2017 that Quintara Hammonds and her long lost pup, Lady Chanel, have seen each other. Oh, finally, after two years, finally. 
finally, finally, finally. I never thought that I was going to get her back. And it was just, it was literally breathtaking because this was my baby. So I didn't, I really I was like, hopefully she remembers me. Hopefully she's okay. Lady Chanel first came into Hammond's life when she adopted her from a humane society in Birmingham, Alabama. She was incredible. She, it, Everything that I needed as far as laying up in the bed with me when I was having bad days, when we would go out to the park, meet other dogs, go to my daughter's school. She went to every day we have drop off and she was the dog that was in the drop off. Hammonds got an unexpected call from an unexpected place last week about Lady Chanel. A little dog was rescued from the side of the road along with another dog who apparently is not um, in any way connected. But uh, we managed to get both of them, and one of the things that we do as part of our intake procedure is, is check for microchips. I called everybody. I was like, this, you all would not believe this. My dad was like, what, what are you talking about? And my mom was screaming on She was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> the mystery of how Lady Chanel ended up all the way over in West Point from Birmingham still remains. I was so scared. And I Thank God she's microchipped. But one thing we do know is that a dog mom and her furry friend are finally back together. It touches all of us because you can't help but put yourself in that situation. Your own pet disappears and this chance of a lifetime to get that pet back that was actually stolen, according to the owner, uh, is just phenomenal. Will is the other dog that was found with Lady Chanel on the side of the highway. He's now up for adoption at the West Point Clay County Animal Shelter. Love it, love it. Well, the microchip is what reunited that dog owner with her furry friend. Microchips, microchips, that is, they don't have GPS tracking, but it is a good way that you can ensure that you can find your lost pet. Now, it comes in handy that if, if your pet gets out of the house or it's fence or just gets picked up by someone else and is taken to the animal shelter. If your pet is chipped, it can help shelters and vets identify who the pet belongs to. There's actually a way we can scan your dog with this little microchip reader, and it can your name and stuff will come up, and you'll be able to contact you instead of them. You know, if they, if they lost their collar, a lot of people think just the collar with the rabies tag is going to do it, but a lot of dogs that get out and run off, they will probably lose their collars, and the microchip's the only way because the microchip can't come out. We actually inject it under the skin. Microchip in the syringe. What we would do is hold her. Skin Emerson says that microchipping is for all types of pets. She says they're inexpensive, and you can register yourself with the microchip chip online with all of your yours and your pets information and speaking of pets today is national adopt a shelter pet day the day raises awareness for the countless number of pets that are waiting to find their forever homes people celebrate the national holiday by sharing pictures of their adopted pets on social media if you want to chime in just use the hashtag adopt a shelter pet day we'd love to see some of those pictures hey guess what market street is here and that means it's time to crank it up a lucky person We'll get the key that cranks up a made-over Nissan Xterra. W.H. Robinson from Columbus, he registered and pre-qualified from Bob's Paint and Auto right here in Columbus. Last chance to register for Crank It Up is this Saturday during the Market Street Festival right here at WCBI. Now, you must show a valid ID and proof of insurance to register. For more info, just visit our website, WCBI.com. So good luck, Mr. Robinson, and to all of those who qualify this year. Well, it's feeling like the dog days of summer here this week. Temperatures tomorrow into the middle, even upper 70s out there. With that, though, brings a chance for rain and storms. We'll time it out and let you know what to expect coming up after the break. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, blah, 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 blah. Uh, no ticker.
your WCBI First Alert AccuWeather forecast with meteorologist Jacob Dickey. Very nice day overall today. Just some clouds here and there with a lot of sunshine. Temperatures at the 5 o'clock hour still in the low 80s. It's 82 at the airport, 81 in Starkville, Tupelo also at 82. As we go through tonight, temperatures will fall into the 70s there by 7 to 8 o'clock. I think we'll be sliding them down into the 60s overnight tonight. We'll call it low to middle 60s under a partly cloudy sky. I've got 63 for a low in Columbus and in West Point, 64 in Starkville. Amory and Tupelo checking in at 65 tonight. Vernon, Alabama at 63. Really not a bad Tuesday night. As we look at radar here, big storm system out in the Great Plains, a tornado outbreak underway in parts of Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Missouri. We don't have to worry about those storms here. We'll get some rain later on in the week. Tonight, though, things staying dry, just those clouds showing up on satellite and radar across our area. As we look ahead in future cast here, notice throughout the evening, still looking at a mix of clouds and some clear sky here and there. By the morning, I think we could see a few isolated showers rolling in. And really, during the day, Wednesday, perhaps a few pop up showers here and there, maybe a rumble of thunder. Overall, though, not expecting a lot of activity. I think we're we're going to hold it off maybe until Wednesday evening, even into Thursday before we get those better chances for some rain and storms. Temperatures will be climbing quickly. We're heading yet again into the middle 80s, some of us into the upper 80s. Lots of sunshine out there. We'll call it partly cloudy to mostly sunny sky through the day with south winds generally between 5 and 10 miles an hour. Tupelo at 84, Aberdeen 85, 83 in Houston and in Pontotoc. Some upper 80s into the Golden Triangle, 87 in Macon, Columbus, West Point, and Starkville at 86. I've got 85 in Ypor, Winona at 84. And then into West Alabama, 84 in Soligent, Vernon, and in Reform during the day. Now, as we look ahead here, this front that we've been watching coming our direction, it slows down and loses its momentum. And that's not good for us as we head into Friday into the weekend. Notice a weak area of low pressure forming off to our west. That will slide to the east. And unfortunately, that means that Friday and now Saturday look to have the better chances for some scattered to numerous showers and storms. Could see upwards of an inch of rain in some spots. Of course, a little bit more some places, a little bit less. After the rain on Saturday, we'll keep a chance for an isolated shower and storm on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, dry and warm. Here's WCBI Sports with Tom Apple. Mississippi State baseball is off to one of its best starts in school history, and when playing some of the program's best ball, you'd want a full schedule. The Bulldogs remain below 56 regular season games due to a cancellation with Nebraska, but now it's back to a full slate and for a good cause. The Bulldogs baseball program adding Louisiana Tech to its schedule, pitting the matchup on May 14th. Admission into the game is free, but the Salvation Army will be on site collecting donations to support Ruston and Louisiana Tech in the wake of devastating tornadoes that touched down last week. First pitch for that game is set for 6.30 p.m. Gulf State champions crowned in North Mississippi. Baldwin boys take home the Class 1 title, pulling off a big comeback. They were down 12 strokes to begin the day to win by three. Bearcats winners of three straight state championships. TCPS the runners-up. Kai Meeks of Walnut, the individual champion. On the girls' side in Class 2, Van Cleve takes home the title. Nettleton finishing second. Nettleton's Riley Mayhew winning her fifth straight individual title, shooting 137 for the tournament. Hebron Christian Academy's Rachel McGrew signs to play softball with MUW. The two-sport athlete also hopes to try for a spot on the Owls basketball team, but says MUW has always been the goal to pursue a career in nursing. I've always wanted to go to that school. Uh, originally, I wanted to play basketball, but once he showed me all the opportunities I could achieve playing softball, it was just a no-brainer. Starkville Academy senior pitcher Griffin Little signs with Meridian Community College. Griffin and the Vols head into playoff baseball tonight against Bayou Academy. Scott will be in the kitchen with the veranda when we come back. Stay with us.
<clears throat> oh, you know what? Let's get a let me grab this little toaster right here. David, you coming up? We're gonna take a break and you come over. Yeah, right. we'll have a we'll have two segments. Here's In the Kitchen with the Veranda in Starkville. Yes, the Veranda is here with some very good smelling catfish. And you oh, know, yeah. Jay, when I think of summertime, I kind of think of some good the catfish, catfish yeah. eating. Well, that's what I said when you come in, you're going to taste it because it's catfish and shrimp, right? Everybody likes catfish and shrimp, right? So this is our center cut delicata catfish. It comes from Simmons Cats. We use all Mississippi uh, farm raised catfish. Simmons is a producer. Uh, out of the Delta in Mississippi. So what we do is we fry up our big center cut piece of catfish. Uh, this is one we've done before. Mm. We change this up. We use this center cut, but we change it every week. We do something different. And then we have the, our fried shrimp. Both of these are a little cornmeal battered. And then what we do, what, we end, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to top this with this green peppercorn gravy I was telling you about. And this is special. It's got a little bit of brandy in it. It's got green peppercorns, which are not quite as you know, hot as a, as a black peppercorn. And uh, it's just really tasty. It's a really good way to finish this dish. And so we, what we, what we want to put with this is these marinated tomatoes. So we have a really nice tomato vinaigrette. That acid will counterbalance this creaminess. I was about to say, you've got to get your veggies or fruit, whatever you call a tomato. Your veg, yeah. <laughs> your and veggie then also the it. cream spinach, which is uh, something that really we've added to the menu that people Ooh. really love. So the cream spinach, you know, uh, Parmesan, heavy cream, garlic, onions, really tasty. You know, I'm always looking for a new way to try spinach because I usually only eat it and eggs or something and uh, speaking of your catfish you guys have some specials going on right now uh, starting tonight this one is going to run all the way through the weekend this particular one and then also starting on thursday because it's graduation this weekend mississippi state we'll have the cowboy ribeyes which are the big like 20 ounce ribeye with the bone in we always really you know everybody really loves those for on these big weekends and we're having the u10 diver scallops which are the big great big scallops you know uh u10 denotes the size so mm -hmm. the lower the number the bigger the size 10 and under per pound so they're big old scallops like this. We'll have those running Thursday all through the weekend as well. And it sure looks good. Now tell me a little bit about this spinach and how it's made. Okay. Well, I love spinach. I was, somebody was asking me about this the other day, and I grew up eating uh, Popeye's spinach out of the can because I watched Popeye's, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. uh, cartoon, <laughs> and I loved it. So, I mean, I'm literally like three years old eating spinach out of a can, if you can believe that. So when I got older, I got to be a chef. I'm like, well, there's, you, you know, I have to get out of a can. You can get fresh spinach. So what we do is we cook it down. Takes a lot of spinach. We put uh, we saute onions, garlic, uh, and some butter, and a lot of black pepper. And then we go in with the heavy cream and parmesan. So we kind of cook that together. Then we fold our spinach into that. And that spinach is going to go so good. Yep. With the catfish. We well, can oh. get that on other dishes as well. You can get the spinach, you know, anytime. We like the spinach. All right. Well, when we come back, we're actually going to have uh, even have a friend that's going to do the taste test, but little do they know, I'm taste testing with him. We need a taste off. <laughs> we'll be right back. Stay with us. Uh -huh. 
He's going to tell me. He's going to tell me how good my food is, and hopefully Scott will too. Yes. What we got? What we got coming back? A minute. Uh, I always thought Dateline NBC would be my introduction. Okay. To <laughs> yeah, you don't want to have that. What? Chris Hansen, that's you. Okay. Uh -uh. Okay. <laughs> um, MC wants me to ask you, like, if they need to have a reservation or anything like that. Because graduation being this weekend. We don't do reservations. Events. They can call us. If you want to ask me that question, I can say it on the air. You want to do that? Yeah. Okay. How long, are, how long are we going to have coming back? Uh, About a minute, 10. Okay. Underneath. What is he plugging this into? Watch out. What's he going to. Can I get your cord? Your box? Here's your box. Just my box. Yeah. <laughs> Under pressure. Plug it in, stick it in your pocket. Thank you, sir. Can I get a much to say your name for me? Yeah, David Cootie. Did you hear it? I'll just say something to you when we come back. David Cootie. All right, well, Jay, you brought a, a special taste tester I with did. you this evening. So this is my good friend, David Cootie. He's my ace bartender. He likes to come and hang out in the kitchen and watch me <laughs> cook. So I said, come, over, come with me, David, and tell me how good my food is, please. <laughs> yeah. So I will let you guys might want to try okay, it. Okay, I'm going to try it, too. So I think you, okay. This I'll is the Simmons Delicata Catfish. It's been fried with fried shrimp on top, and it has a green peppercorn brandy sauce over the mm. top with the cream the sauce, spinach. The sauce Isn't is right? definitely good. Yeah, the green Jay, peppercorn's right. We, we were talking earlier a little bit about wow. graduation. Mm -hmm. It being graduation weekend. Do people need to make reservations and stuff? I mean, I'm uh, sure you guys are We don't do reservations on graduation weekend. If you call us about an hour before you're going to be there, we, will, we do a call-ahead wait. So it's not a reservation. It just kind of bumps you up on the list. So okay. when you get there, we're, we're moving faster than the rest of everybody. All right. And I think we have the phone number if we have that graphic. I don't know if we had the, the number on there or not. If not, we'll have it on our website <coughs> for sure. So, David, how was it? It was good. Uh, honestly, I would say it tastes like... It tastes like something you gotta have. You're not just saying that no, the boss is standing no. right here, are you? Sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying that. So, you know, I'm from Yazoo City. I'm from the Delta, and that's the best awesome. I've ever had catfish myself. Catfish. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, thank yeah. you guys so much for being here. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good night. We'll see you right back here tonight at 6 o'clock. The CBS Evening News is next. Go, guys.